Tokenmetrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Token Metrics Market Update Show. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need to make money in crypto and you need a roadmap in crypto, then subscribe to this channel. If you like the content, make sure you turn on alerts so you can be notified when we do a stream particularly in this highly volatile world. All right, let's see who's on here. Let's say hello. Taz first on the stream. Yes, it's Friday. This market is tired and I'm sure you are too. Wax, let's go. Indiana, okay, Driftless Crypto in Wisconsin. Megan, good morning from Boston, LVD in Zurich, right? I used to work for Swiss Bank Corp a long time ago. Hello from London and all our friends from England. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Matt, hi. How you doing? Yes, I know our friends on the East Coast are snowed in. And I just wanted to take a brief moment to shout out to a gentleman yesterday who was watching me live in Brooklyn in a UPS truck. So if you're out there, sir, I gave you some love yesterday and I'm giving you more today. All right. Oscar's asking about an XRP buyback. I don't know uh, about that, but I will look into it. Let's see. We've got Luxembourg. We've got Flagger Beach, Florida. All right. We've got them from all over the place. Casablanca, good morning from Indy. Indy in the house. Okay, folks, let's get to the market update. Pulling up the PowerPoint right now, and we are going to get busy so we can get you the charts that you need from for this weekend. This is your market update. Let's talk about fear. You know, there is a lot of fear in equities. You would have thought this would have all been over when the Fed got done. You know, maybe I was reading too much fancy research talking about how the Fed was going to hike rates. This apparently was news to our lobotomized friends over in equities. I'm like, guys, inflation's at seven, rates are at zero. Fear is at 30. Fear was at 18 or 16 at the start of the year. Now, one question you might ask yourself is, what's up with the fear? Why are they all upset in equities? Well, the Fed's gonna raise rates, duh, okay, but, what else are they afraid of? Well, you know what, folks? I've been watching some news. I watched BBC yesterday, and it could be Vladimir Putin. It could be, all right? Now, just to get the grave stuff out of the way, uh, I remember watching movies about the Cuban Missile Crisis. It was an event where the Russians put nuclear weapons in Cuba, which is off the coast of the U.S. state of Florida. That was a pretty big crisis and people thought that was going to be like World War III. All right, when I look at this current situation in the Ukraine, it really appears like everyone's blowing it off. But I don't think the equity market's blowing it off because fear is at 30. What does this have to do with crypto? Well, I don't know. But if that situation, you know, comes to a head in February, you're going to have to stay on your toes. I personally think that's a buying opportunity, but you never know. You just have to respect the fact that equities are afraid of something. So I know on a crypto show, it's easy to make fun of equities, but we have to respect the level of fear that's currently going on over there. Now that said, fear is often a buying opportunity. Right now, S&P futures are all over the place to the point where I, it's like, if I had hair, I'd be pulling it out. S&P futures around 4,300. It's just a key level, folks. 
You know, in this market, you got to have a pencil and you got to have something on your desk where you write down the numbers or you mark them on your trading view charts. I'm watching 4,300 in S&P. If it's above it, it's okay. If it's below it, if it's a little below it, if it's okay. If it's a lot below it, it's bad. Now in QQQ, that's an ETF for what I call Web2, Microsoft, Netflix, Apple, et cetera. 340 is the key technical point. So if Qs, as they're called, is above 340, they're okay. All right? It's all right. People can calm down and carry on and buy crypto. <laughs> all right? If Qs are below 340, then you have to think about it. Now, just a brief word on the geopolitical situation. Putin does have the power to make energy prices over in Europe worse. People are already looking at a 54% increase in their power bills over there, right? That's, that's horrible, right? And that could get worse. So this is something that you are going to have to stay on top of in crypto. Frequently, the market climbs the wall of worry. That usually works. But, you know, if tanks get involved and invasions happen, it's just something we need to be aware of. Now, more cheery news. Uh, Goldman Sachs thinks that oil is going to go up 15% to $101 a barrel. The line that you see on the screen there, the blue line, that is spare oil production capacity, right? In other words, we didn't do anything in 2020 and nobody built anything that helps produce oil. So guess what? Oil goes up, okay? More cheery news on inflation. Check this chart out. Is this an altcoin? No, it's soybean futures, food, right? The price of fertilizer has gone parabolic, right? And the price of crops is going parabolic. There's a freeze in Florida. Orange juice is flying as well. The CRB index, this is like ridiculously old school. Okay, the symbol is there for trading view if you've got the data. I know it's a ridiculous symbol, but I put it up there so you can screen capture it. Okay, this could be an accumulation cone. And if oil's going to 100 and agricultural commodities smoke higher, okay, you know, CRB could go up. I hope not, but it could, right? And if it does, the bond market's going to hate that. So let's take a brief moment to review. We have Russia as a possible problem, right? We have commodity prices as a problem. And here's the third problem, all right? Supposedly, a leading American newspaper is going to report about the possibility of executive action, as in something that goes into effect immediately, as in it doesn't get voted on, regarding the use of cryptocurrencies in the United States. My Twitter shows the retweet from Pomp, right? That's where I first heard it. And Bitcoin Magazine wrote it up today. And Barron's is the Wall Street Journal group that put it out on Thursday. So I do 50 charts for an up move. And then I sit at my desk and I watch the market like just decline to where I'm like ringing the Zen bell. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Well, that's what's going on. Now, here's what I'm hoping. So I just told you all the bad news, right? There's Putin, there's commodities, there's this regulation thing. What I'm hoping is over the weekend, that's going to be the buy the news, right? So everyone sold the rumor and sold all this negative stuff. And I'm hoping that there's some kind of rally over the weekend to give crypto a boost and help make these altcoin charts I showed in prior videos look a little bit better, right? We got to start looking better. Now, let's look at ETH. I had a request through my Twitter. I really appreciate any feedback in comments or chart requests. I'm a human being. I can't watch everything. And I had this really nice person ask me, can you look into the death cross in ETH? So the death cross is something where the 50-day moving average, that's in red, crosses below the black line, which is the 200-day moving average. This golden cross, which is on the way up, and the death cross on the way down, is famous from old-fashioned stock market TA. Now, 
Normally, when you get this type of death cross at the initial meeting of the moving averages, the market actually rallies. It can rally a little bit or it can rally a lot. It can be a bull market or it could be a bear market rally, but it's usually a pretty sharp rally. Now, back in August, everybody was like, it's the end of the world, okay? Because these moving averages are about to cross over and it wasn't. In this case, right, in ETH, particularly with possible DeFi regulation, I'm not going to lie, this chart is scary. Also, I don't really like the fact that ETH is just sitting around. That said, okay, again, if we're doing kind of a buy the news thing, then if everybody's afraid, there should be a rally over the weekend. Now, if there is no rally over the weekend, folks, you know, we got a problem. But I just can't bring myself to get negative right this second. If the market breaks down, fine. That's why we use stops. Let me say that again. That's why we use stops. Okay, total three. All right, total market cap without Bitcoin and Ethereum. I was hoping for a rally so this measure would get above 700 billion. And instead, you know, I basically got shit on, right? It sucks. Sorry. Okay. I know it's a family show, but when it comes to all coins, I'm passionate as are you. Alt coins have got to reverse. We need Solana, Avalanche, Phantom, and Near to lead this market higher, probably with Decentraland and Sandbox bringing up the rear. Okay. We absolutely need an altcoin rally sooner rather than later. I can wait a couple weeks. I can wait until the first week of February, as long as the market doesn't fall apart. Okay. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I want to do value investing here. I do, right? 50 charts in the last video and probably more than, you know, more than that in the prior video before that. Okay. So I got a lot of charts. I got a lot of altcoins on support. We just need the big boys to get going and we need ETH to hold support at 2,400. Okay, now let's talk about something that I think is a brighter picture, which is Bitcoin, right? I can't believe with all the stuff going on in the world, okay, Bitcoin is a commodity. Like Michael Saylor will tell you it's property or it's the best use of energy, right? You put the energy to work in a miner and the miner operation and you produce Bitcoin. <clears throat> Bitcoin represents freedom as does all of crypto. So I have a really hard time getting bearish on Bitcoin below this linear regression channel when Bitcoin was popping above it, you know, back at the high in October, November, right? So it didn't pay to get bullish at 68,000. And I don't understand why it really pays to get bullish at 36,000. If you look at the Bitcoin futures contract at the CME weekly, I mean, all it did was go down and fill a gap from July. So again, you know, you know, LFG, let, let's get it going right now. I, we may have to wait a week, but I, I want to see a rally over the weekend because I think if crypto can rally, it, it can be on days when equities are closed. I mean, if crypto can't rally when equities are closed, then we're in trouble. But I still think you stick with value investing, right? When do you do value investing? When all the news is bad. Okay, now you don't want to do value investing and then get killed. That's why you should, what? Use a stop. Use a stop. Okay, continuing to look at Bitcoin, zoomed in on a three-day chart, okay? Bitcoin hasn't done anything in a week. It's sat right here. They went all the way down and then they went up and then went back down again. Now we're just sitting here. Okay. So the bulls are holding in. Demand is weak. I know the on-chain data shows, you know, short-term longs are puking. You know, people are worried, right? But frequently when people are worried, that's when you look for opportunities. Said differently, the market never trades good at a bottom. And it never trades terrible at a top. At a top, it looks like it's going up forever. And at a bottom, it looks like it's going to zero. So hopefully we can see a rally 
that gets all those other altcoin charts pumping, right? Just sitting here, you know, just creates more uncertainty and fear. I'm willing to sit here for a week and watch it, right? And keep my fingers crossed that I don't wake up in the morning and see everything down 15%, all right? So what am I saying? The market is okay, right? Value investing is how you want to think, right? But you need the market to validate the thinking. Galaxy Digital, cryptocurrency-related equities are going to be twice as important as they have been in the past. Galaxy Digital, the stock of hedge fund, uh, Mike Novogratz, is holding support. There was a lot of support below 14. If Galaxy above is above 15, there's hope for crypto. I want to see green candlesticks in these stocks, right? Give me some green. Give me some hope that I can jump into altcoins and not worry about getting killed. Micro strategy is also going to become relevant. All right. Now, normally you'd say, well, this doesn't matter. You know, these, this company is, it's a small computer company. It's Michael Saylor's company. And it's basically a Bitcoin ETF, right? It's a small company that owns, you know, a couple billion dollars in Bitcoin if memory serves. So what happens to the stock of this company is now relevant, particularly since we have reached his average price of his Bitcoin purchases. So in December of 2020, MicroStrategy started around 300 and went to 1200. Now it's back here. The 200 week moving average is at 284 and the stock is hanging around 300. Let me just tell you something. Stock rallies or doesn't rally. Eh, okay, maybe it's not as important as Galaxy. But if this stock goes down, okay, that's bad, right? That's why you need to keep it on your screen, all right? Because, you know, if Bitcoin, for whatever reason, breaks our hearts and goes below this guy's average price, all right, and he sees red on his screen, you know, I would say two things. Well, welcome to crypto, homie, okay? Red ink is something you got to deal with, all right? Two... All right, it's very relevant for us because they may have to start hedging. Now, I don't anticipate that. I would rather be bullish here than bearish. But you have to accept the fact that there are indicators and things like CRB, like oil, like micro strategy that you're going to need to watch to try to figure out whether or not there's going to be demand for crypto. Now, in thanks to the person who uh, brought the death cross to my attention in Ethereum, Okay, I'm looking at Decred on a weekly basis. Now, this, like many other cryptos, has traded terrible since November, but currently it's sitting on its 200-week moving average near 60. So again, it doesn't look, it's well-supported, but bulls have to come in and take charge. Now, I think bulls can come in and take charge. The question is, will they? In this particular coin, as with many coins, I'm starting to think if you're better off rather than catching the falling knife, seeing if it rallies and then buying the next dip, right? In other words, it's almost like now or never it, it, in this and many other cryptos. Okay, Cosmos, a bright spot all year, something token metrics analysts have had to call on is now at weekly support at $27.40. Okay, now... That's really good support. And frankly, I would expect that to hold. Not investment advice, but I'd be shocked if it didn't, right? If the whole market goes down, Cosmos may be the one bright spot. Okay, that said, I saw the shocking price action in Luna today with Luna below 50, right? We had Luna as a buy zone in the 50s. And I believe I saw it print 48 this morning. So that's why you use a stop. Okay, but Cosmos chart looks okay as of now. And I haven't brought it up. I talked about DYDX yesterday, but I'm just wondering how much more pain can PERP go through? PERP is down at 575. Okay, there's a possibility of one final puke. But I like this idea of decentralized derivatives exchanges. If there's a regulatory threat, PERP and DYDX could become very important, very important.
right? Because I don't know, you know, how they would stop a decentralized derivatives exchange, especially if they're like firmly rooted overseas. So that is the market update. All right. So Megan is waiting for near to go down. All right. Let's just check what the chart is saying. Uh, Windy City card says if ETH hits 2,500, I'm unloading. So this is a, a good thing to bring up, right? It's a good thing to bring up. I want everybody on the stream to feel comfortable with what they think. So if they're bearish and they want to sell a rally, well, you know what? That's okay. Because I'll tell you what. If this thing rallies over the weekend and then turns around and starts to go back down, you know, it's called a value trap, right? It looks cheap. It's on support, but no one buys it. So that's why I want green on the screen in a hurry. Okay. Um, let's see. Why is Cosmos and Phantom going up while Matic is going down? A question from Relatable. Okay, that's a good question. Matic had a lot of things priced into it, right? They were burning tokens. You know, everyone was saying it was going to be a top five coin. So people may be taking profits, okay, in Matic, right? It's not, not that the story is dead. It's just that the story may have played out. Now, when it comes to Phantom, you know, Phantom is the future of DeFi, at least if you look at total value locked, right? Also, Cosmos is a layer one, I'm sorry, is a layer zero that, I don't know, frankly, has held up incredibly well because layer zero has been the surprise narrative of 2022. Last year, it was layer one. This year, it's layer zero. And I'm still holding out hope that Polkadot can wake up. But, Polkadot is not operational yet, and Cosmos has actually been around for a long time. All right, I'm going to bring, I'm, I'm writing down, looks like we got requests for certain coins. I definitely want to give y'all what you need, okay, as well as talk to the chat. All right, let's see what else we got going on. What's going to happen in March? Well, the Fed's going to raise rates. Right, we know that. And they're probably going to announce that they're going to print less money. Okay, but the printing press is still on. And it's probably still going to be on in March. It's just going to be a little less than what's going on now. All right, there are two inflation releases between now and March. One of them is in February 10th. The other one is March 10th. So that is what, that is, that is your Fed handbook. Okay. Uh, Jerry Connell smashed the like button. Thank you. Please hit that button. It really helps us out. Okay, Elijah, what's up? Okay, we have Greece in the house. We have Slovenia. I believe we have Kentucky. All right. We have also Ghana, Toronto, Canada. Thank you for coming on the show. Now, let me share my screen. And let's take a look at some of the most popular requests. So here's Casper, right? Casper pain is huge. Okay. This is Casper four hour. Let me just label this so people who watch the video can see what it is. All right. You know, the story with Casper is the story of all altcoins, right? Some of the stuff has gone down, okay? This was the most important support point around eight cents or eight and a half cents, right? And it's not holding. You need to see Casper go up above this level so you can have confidence that it's okay. Now, it's all right for a market to sort of battle it out, right? But okay. We're going to watch the battle next week. I did 50 charts to give you the levels. Now we just got to sit and wait for the jury verdict from Mr. Market. All right. All right. VRA, a lot of people asking about this. Again, trying to get it going. And all it's doing is building a base. 
So this is another thing where we just have to sit and wait. Not does it make for exciting TV, but I know it's wrecking your nerves, right? Especially if you're down on the position. Okay, Gala Games was up big post-Fed. Let's see what we got. All right, so post-Fed, you got this huge spike. So here was, here was the puke out. That was the give up trade here. Whoops. So the give up trade was here. That was everybody giving up. Now the question is, is it over? Let's go to an 89 minute chart, see if we can get a better look. This is sort of what we've been reduced to. All right. Here's the good news in Gala Games. Let's look at how it comes off the lows. So when you're looking at a coin, this is the type of structure that you want to see. Okay. You want to see a five wave structure off the lows. Okay. That means the up move is real. So for the moment, you might be able to draw that in Gala. At the end of the day, Gala probably has to hold 17 cents. Right, that's where Gala has to hold because our fundamental guys have talked about a valuation issue with this coin. Now, you could actually be really excited if Gala got above 0.817. So if they show us the money over the weekend or they show us the money into next week, right? Meaning, give me a rally, give me something, all right? Gala would actually start to look pretty good above 0.187. So we're hoping for the rally. We're definitely in LFG mode. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go, right? As I'm sure you are. And I'm over all of this price action where it's horrible because of the Fed and geopolitical events. Right? People are scared, and I get that. But I think this is a more constructive period, and that extreme fear creates opportunity. Now, of course, again, we need to see the rally. We need to see demand. That's what we need in crypto. We need demand. Okay, someone's looking for Vulcan. Let's go over to the Metaverse watch list and check out Vulcan. Okay, I'm going to the daily chart now. See what we got. Okay, so Vulcan's making green candles. And honestly, I'm not opposed to the meta. I'm not, I'm not opposed to trying to play it. Right now, you know, one of my former colleagues used to say, you know, buy support and sell resistance. So support was at six and resistance is at 10.9. Okay, I'll label this chart for people watching the video later. The point is, folks, I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed to speculating in the metaverse. What I'm opposed to doing is doing bad trades at bad locations. So if Vulcan actually starts to go up, okay, let, let me put a stochastic up here, right? You know, this stochastics picture for the moment is okay, right? Let's actually take it out and try RSI. They're similar indicators. So when you look at RSI for Vulcan, you know, it actually looks okay. It's actually trying to move north. But Vulcan's got to break out. So I know people are probably long this from above, right? It's not like everyone sat around and said, oh, well, let me sit in stable coins and buy Vulcan at eight. No one thought it was going there. Okay. So let's just take a look at a couple other things while I'm on this watch list. Okay, ARC, all right, this is the altcoins of the stock market. We talked about this as being very important. You can't believe how much noise there is in the legacy media about ARC. It's unbelievable. This is the 89-minute chart of ARC, and this, to me, looks like strong bullish divergence. So this is actually a very hopeful sign for altcoins if they're going to squeeze everybody out in ARC, right? I, I, it's kind of funny. You know, 
Normally in crypto, we're okay if stocks blow up. I'm okay with it. I don't know about you, right? Because I'm sick of them being the world's greatest asset class when it's just kind of a phony baloney game. I know they say that about crypto, but, you know, <laughs> to each their own, right? Equities can go down and the stocks in ARK certainly have gone down. Now, if they squeeze ARK higher, right, that's great for crypto. So that's just something to keep an eye on. And while I'm here, let's just take a look at Avalanche, right? Dying to get Avalanche going, right? But it just doesn't want to do it, right? It just doesn't want to do it. I mean, honestly, this is like a triangle formation, right? And Avalanche has to make a decision. Is it going to break out of the top or is it going to break out of the bottom? All right, so let's leave that up on the screen and see what's going on at the chat, okay? Thank you. I appreciate Megan is waiting for Nier to go down, right? Abagochi has been strong this dump. Please take a look. Let's see if I can get it, get it on this chart system. Okay, I have it on Qcoin. Okay, so looking at it on Qcoin, it's actually held up pretty good, like you said. Let's see if I can get a like a one-day chart. Okay, so what I can tell you about this is like this was the first trade when it first came out. So when it hit Qcoin, the first place anybody on Qcoin was able to buy it was 196. Okay, let's see if I can get more history on it. Okay, so here's here here's here's GHST on Kraken, a little bit more history. All right, again, you know, we're sitting here on support near the 200-day moving average, okay? But all I see is red candles. See, folks, this is a give-up trade. Right, people are packing it in on this. Now, the thing about a give up trade is, you know, obviously, if you're long it, it's unbelievably painful and my heart goes out to you. But the fact of the matter is, when they get done giving up, you should see a relief rally, okay, around two dollars. So, you know, how do you know the sellers are done? How do you know they're done giving up? Well, when it suddenly wicks down and then goes green, we need to see green in altcoins. Okay, hello from Italy, India, New Jersey. Pauline from New York City. Where is support in Luna? Good question. Let's take a look. Okay. So, I mean, I guess they wanted to take Luna all the way back down to where the rally started. Let's see if I can go to a two-day chart. No, let's stick with the one-day. Okay. So, Luna has its 200-day moving average at 45. So, it is a little scary about Luna particularly since I noticed, I believe on Mike Novogratz's Twitter that he hasn't been heard from in a couple of days. So I'm not sure what's up with that. No, he was a big Luna fan. And I'm wondering if these guys are going to come on the tape and kind of defend it, right? 44 is support. Uh, the takeoff point of the last rally was at 47.62. So that's a nice way of saying Luna should stop going down here because there's an obvious give up trade going on. Now, let me tell you something else that I just saw, right? Which probably isn't good. And it's probably why Luna is trading like this. I just figured this out. There's a giant head and shoulders top in this. It is awful, right? 
Here's the head. Here are the two shoulders. One shoulder is right over here. Okay. And then the target price of the head and shoulders pattern, yikes, is 20. <laughs> okay. So this is like altcoin market cap, total three. Okay. That's awful. Right. It's awful. Like Luna, in order to invalidate this pattern, has to get above 71. But if you're having a WTF moment, and you don't understand why people are selling it. That's why. Because they're spooked about this head and shoulders pattern. It's probably making the rounds on Twitter. So whoever brought that up, I thank you. 200 day moving average is at 45. So let's review. Okay. Luna's got to get above 71 before it's good. Support temporarily is at 45. Okay. If you're going to be a value investor in this, you want to make sure 45 holds. Honestly, with this, I would just wait. There's got to be better price action. There's got to be a better idea somewhere. If you bought it and you got hosed, right, then you got to keep your stop. I think not investment advice near 45. You don't want to sit and watch this thing go to 20. Okay. Unfortunately, you can get hosed in some of the best stuff out there. It happens. It happens. Like nobody would have thought, nobody would have thought Luna would have acted like this. I would have thought Luna would have held right around here and it didn't. All right. Let's see what else we got in the chat. Got a lot of people going here, right? Hi from Mexico. Welcome. President's executive order on crypto thoughts bill from farmer Sam. Yes, I do understand that, you know, they're doing something. It looks like it's from a national security point of view. So it's probably money laundering. And unfortunately it could be DeFi related. It could be DeFi related. Okay. That could be why Luna is trading lower. Okay. You know, we're, su we're subjected in this market to a lot of weird stuff. Okay. It looks like I got a couple more requests here. Let me see if I can get them going. Okay. That, that is one of the big risks. That's one of the big risks, right? We don't know what these guys are going to say. All right. So we have a bunch of requests. I got somebody who's asking for helium, right? Somebody's asking, are we bullish? Yes. Okay. Uh, we are, but we're using stops. Okay. The link Marines have been too quiet lately. All right. Yes, they have been because, you know, we're waiting to see if chain link holds 15. Okay. Hello from Ecuador and Australia. And beast says, hello, bear market. Yes, that is possible. Okay. We're looking at a request for DPR. Okay, this is DPR on Qcoin. And again, like a lot of these coins that were launched, it's kind of sitting right at the price it first printed at on Qcoin. So, I, you know, they, they hosed everybody down here. I'm not familiar with the particulars of this coin, but from a technical analysis point of view, it looks like it's got to hold 10 to be good. Now, buyers start coming in, right? like they did back in December. Great. All right. But if they don't, you may have to make a different decision, but for the moment it's okay. Now let's see if I can get a I O Z also on Q coin. All right. Now I got a lot of people in a lot of pain in altcoins. So in some of this stuff that has gone way up and way down, all right. The good news is in this coin support, technical support is at 0.16. So in, in, a, in prior instances, this coin stopped at 0.16. So I guess if you are holding a giant bag in this and you're, you're hurt. Okay. My heart definitely goes out to you, but what you have to remember is you know, sometimes when something makes a bottom, it can be really painful, right? 
Definitely sellers are trying to get out of this on any rally. Okay. If you look deeply at the candle. So this is a reminder that when you have an altcoin, if you did a trade and the trade didn't work out, right? If you bought it and you didn't buy it for a good reason, or you think the fundamentals may have changed, okay? You have to evaluate things objectively. You have to keep your head clear. Your most important asset is your head, is your mind, right? How do you keep your head clear in this market? Right. Well, you have to start off by admitting to yourself if you did a bad trade. And you know what? If you did, that's okay. I mean, did you see ARC? Right. There's a portfolio manager who, who put all these companies into an ETF and it's vanishing. Now, we hope they can squeeze ARC. Right. We hope stocks can go up. But if they don't, guess what? There are some huge, huge people out there that have done some terrible trades. Right. And if you're actually looking to follow what's going on in equities beyond what I'm doing here, I'm using Jim Cramer's Twitter. A lot of people make fun of Jim Cramer, and I think that's wrong. Why? Because I have to do television every day, just like he is. Now, his, his audience is slightly bigger than mine. Okay. But if you got to do TV every day, you're in tune with what's happening. Flux. Okay. Let's try to draw it trend line in flux and see how it's doing. Okay. So right now it looks like it's below a primary trend line, right? So it's not doing anything terrible right now, but it's not doing anything good. And it definitely looks like people gave up on it. The thing with altcoins is we want to start seeing demand. Do we have to see it right this second? Eh, no, we can wait a minute. I would like a rally over the weekend personally, right? That would be nice. Right, but we need to start seeing altcoin demand, okay? You know, particularly after the first week in February. So I don't think you have to necessarily freak out, right? In coins like this, but in a week, you have to be honest with yourself. Because if I put together 50 charts, right? And none of them turn out, then, you know, you, you have to ask yourself, okay? So we're looking at, you know, ticker symbol, we're looking at tonic, T-O-N. Okay. We're looking at the same thing, right? Altcoin pain. Okay. 218 is support. Every altcoin, every small altcoin pretty much looks the same way. Destroyed on support. So not necessarily an area where you want to sell, but it is an area where you want to be honest with yourself. Okay. Honest with yourself. Okay. Megan, huge fan of the show is asking for R-O-U-T-E, root. See what I got on Qcoin. Okay. Okay. Quite the pump. Quite the dump. Okay, I would say for this to be okay, you want to see stuff above the 62% retracement. Early, I learned from a YouTuber that if you've got an altcoin, okay, you got to see it above the 62% retracement of its big run up. He used to say, you want that or it's no good, right? So this move here is not so hot, but... Again, like all altcoins, you know, it did find support near all these other prior highs. So it's not perfect, but I don't think it's the end of the world, right? Obviously, this spiked up for a reason, and it does look like people are trying to buy the dip, and I'm not opposed to buying a dip. I'm not. You just have to what? Use a stop, right? Because if you get hosed on a Russian invasion of the Ukraine, or some insane regulation that hurts DeFi, you don't want to be, you know, wrecked and have no capital when it's time to come back. Because I still think the market's going to have a good February. It's just that what are we living with in the meantime? Okay, Bubba, good afternoon to you. All right. Somebody's into Nimic. And one more request, 
Let me see if I can get PBX up here, and then we'll wrap it up for today. Okay, so this is the same story, right? Now, generally speaking, in altcoins, I don't like, I call it the double spike formation. It's very rare that I'll say, you know, I, I, I don't know about this. You know, if you see two big spikes up, this means that whoever's holding it is unloading on retail. Now, Paribus may be a good coin. It's certainly close to support near like 0.012. So I don't think it's a disaster, but I can still see people selling. Now, if they're all sold out, that's fine. But generally speaking, I'm not a big fan of the double spike formation in small altcoins. Okay, folks, that's going to be it for today. Friends, over the weekend, make sure you check out prior videos, right, that show altcoin charts for over like 50 or 60 coins. You're going to need those charts and refer to what's going on over the weekend and into Monday. You know, Will this regulation hurt DeFi? If not, you could get a big rally. Then we're also dealing with our friend, Mr. Putin. Rumor has it, you know, he's going to make a move when the ground freezes in February. I think if he's going to make a move, he's got to do it in early February. So sometimes the market climbs the wall of worry. I think we're going to be taking our cue from stocks. <laughs> Bless our heart. We've got to wait for those monkeys to see if they're going to stabilize before crypto can get going. The most important thing that you want to see in crypto over the next five days is demand. Where is the demand? Where are the green candles? If you get demand, then it's LFG. If we don't get the demand, use a stop. Okay? Use a stop. All right, folks. That's it for me today. Uh, I am going to... I, I am going to be here next week on Monday, all right? I will be here all five days next week, and I will be here for you as much as I can. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on alerts. I know I don't have to say that to my loyal audience, and I do appreciate all the people who tune in live. I often give a lot of love to tokenmetrics.com customers. Today, I want to make sure I give a hat tip to all my friends who watch this show live, whether you're in a far off land or you're in a UPS truck in Brooklyn. Okay, hats off to you. This is Bill Noble. I will see you next week. Thank you.